Hey everyone, Brian Beeler here alongside Kevin O'Brien at the Storage Review Lab. And today we're talking storage, of course, but uh, more specifically Lenovo storage. And Lenovo has been working on their, uh, their array offerings for some time now in this Think System category. We've been testing uh, one of their uh, mid-range systems, all flash, uh, nice little DM7000, I believe, right? Yeah. And you've been specifically looking at cloud connectivity with that array. What have you been up to on that? So with uh, Fabric Pools, we've been playing around with cloud tiering. And okay. it's built-in functionality that uh, you can connect up to any of the uh, major uh, cloud vendors. In this case, we're using Azure. And anything that's cold data, we can move off of the array. In this case, we're saving around 70 gig or so on our array uh, as is. But it allows uh, users to um, move things that they might not want sitting on their more valuable flash storage and in some cheaper media. Well, that's always the trick, right? Because you make the investment in a storage array and now all flash storage array and, and NVMe all flash storage arrays, I mean, you're, you're spending significant uh, capital there. And I think a lot of the customers that are looking at these things maybe don't really have a lot of confidence in understanding their data footprint, their data footprint growth, uh, maybe uh, they've got concerns about uh, how well their data will compress and, and that sort of thing to, to take advantage of, of space saving, space efficiencies. And so having that, uh, that fall back to the cloud is just such a logical way to connect your, your lungs, your volumes to the cloud and be able to move stuff off as, as you desire or programmatically, right? Yeah, especially when it's built in, it's easy for the uh, user to enable. Yeah, and so we've been doing a lot of that work. We've been uh, we've published some reports on that actually, but now we want to walk through the uh, the technical aspects of how that works and, and give you a visual reference for that. And we've also brought in somebody from Lenovo to uh, fact check Kevin in case he gets a little wily with the uh, uh, the facts. Uh, bring in uh, Alex Kranz with Lenovo. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, so we're glad to have you, and we're glad to, to have uh, someone else as part of this uh, this walkthrough. Because if anyone understands this stuff better and understands the customers, you know, it would, it would be you. Uh, so, from the Lenovo standpoint, just give us a quick update on what's going on with the storage portfolio, what you're doing, what you guys are excited about, you know, that sort of thing. Sure. Yeah. So. Um you know, we have the two main storage product lines today, the DM series and the DE series. I mean, we're talking about the DM series, which is our mid-range product offering uh, with the cloud connectivity. Um, you know, so I, we see customers more and more looking to move to the cloud and, and um, you know, take advantage of that. You know, a lot of customers are, are just starting to dip their toes into it, but, you know, all, all organizations are kind of trying to figure out what their uh, cloud strategy is and, and how they want to use it. So a Fabric Pool feature is a, a great way for them, you know, to kind of test it out, explore it. And again, as you mentioned in the lead-in, you know, you have your valuable all-flash array that, you know, is high performance. Um, and it gives you an easy way to move some of your colder data off that you don't want to get rid of um, and, and save that space for your high value, high performance applications. Yeah, well, it seems to me that in the early days of cloud integrations with storage, it, like the first thing was how do I use cloud cost effective cloud storage for backup uh, of, of data? Because that's one thing that's, that's heavy, it's weighty, uh, it doesn't get used all that often, honestly, from a from a recall standpoint. So you want it available, but it doesn't have to be fast. And so we saw a lot of initial cloud adoption out of the gate with taking a specific uh, use case in, the, in backup and shipping that off to you know, Zero or S3 or whatever you wanted, right? Yeah. But this integration, I think, is um, more meaningful to a larger group of people because now you're saying, Put this flash array to work for your your main workloads, but if you take a lot of snaps and and use those features that are enabled on the uh, on the DM line, don't keep them all on high speed, more expensive storage. Let's ship some of those off and do it automatically to to help preserve capacity. So, I think that the from a, a usability and from a meaningfulness uh, standpoint, this is a really great opportunity to leverage the cloud. Um, are you seeing customers start to, to pick up on that and, and start to look at this uh, this type of uh, hybrid strategy as a, as a way to go with DM? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, kind of as you alluded to, 
today customers about 80 percent of their data is cold right so so they have a lot of that data that will sit there um you know we're, we're starting to see adoption of, of this feature um you know it, it's um, you know once customers kind of get a, a, a use of it and, and play around with it for a little bit they really like it and start to expand so it gives them it gives them that that comfort to try it out and and say see, see how, how it goes and control kind of their expansion into the cloud or e- even ha- control some of their on-prem growth right and not having to add another shelf of, of disk to store a bunch of snapshots yeah, and we're going to talk about a lot of that because in the demo, and we should just get into it here in a second, you can walk through the process. It's like really easy. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I think you, know, you can have the cloud connectivity, but if it's uh, confusing or, or you know difficult, then people aren't going to adopt it. This is really simple. And to your point, Alex, on cost effectiveness, you know, I was personally a little worried about it as operating the the DM here and using our accounts with the cloud. I'm like, hey, Kevin, how much we spend? How much did we spend? Because I don't, you know, as a business owner, the cost of cloud consumption, I think, is still really amorphous. So we'll talk to that a little bit, too. You know, I think it ended up being a few bucks, right? It was it was nothing. So when we talk about some of the concerns that people have difficulty or cost, I mean, this the way this works is really efficient. Yeah. So let's actually get into that a little bit. And Kevin will start and, and kind of walk us through uh, what we're looking at. But we've got the uh, the storage manager for DM pulled up. This is a, a GUI yeah, it's the, really uh, yeah, this is the area where you configure your tiers in the uh, DM7000. And of course, we have it uh, pre-connected into the Azure uh, blob storage. And to give you an idea of uh, what's required, you have your uh, server name um, and you end up uh, putting in your private key. In this case, is already filled in. Um, but you you just lump in the data that uh, you get from uh, the container on the uh, Azure blob side. And you, uh, make, as long as your uh, thing can talk to the outside world, you click save and it's connected. There's really not a lot to it. It's more. I think there's more time on set to make sure it could talk to the outside world than it was to get this thing working. Right. So let's go back a step. I know it works with you know we obviously we were using Azure, but what are the other options here? The other options uh, you can go to Storage Grid, uh, Alibaba's uh, Cloud, Amazon S3. Azure Blob uh, Storage, uh, Google Cloud, IBM, and others. <laughs> so, Alex, what stands out here in terms of uh, what your customers are are seeing and using? Yeah, so um, you know, a big a big thing for our customers is they're concerned about about cloud lock in. They don't want to be tied to one particular vendor. If you know, am, if you're using Amazon or Azure or whoever, and they raise rates, you <laughs> you know, you want to be able to to move if it makes more more sense, right? So it gives you the ability, or alternatively, if, if you want to spread your data out across, so it's not all sitting on, on one cloud, you know, in case there's a public cloud outage, um, you know, th- that gives the, the uh, customer both that security to, to use that, as well as kind of a, a a way to move clouds, right? So they don't get locked into one vendor and, and get kind of stuck with increasing rates. Well, which is, you know, a cost was one of those things that people are worried about when it comes to the cloud. Uh, so having that flexibility to move if you need to is is good. Now looking at our system again, the uh, DM7000, uh, when you go through the configuration process, Kevin, to maybe just take a peek at that or, or some of the, uh, the other yeah, so options. So once it's connected, there are some options for how the um, uh, the volumes are configured because obviously some volumes you might not want to connect into the tiering, some you want to, uh, you might want to stay local, or some you might want to just live entirely in cloud. That's where the tiering policy comes in for snapshot only, auto, none, and all. So Alex, what this is important, I think, from a, a technology perspective. Walk through those those choices for us and, and talk about where that fits in in different volume needs. Sure. So um, you know, I would say for the most part. We recommend auto for, for most customers. That gives you kind of the most. Uh, it'll move the most amount of data, but you can set how what de, what's defined as cold data. But that'll automatically start moving over your snapshots and all that cold data over to the cloud um, and, and free up the most space for you. Um, but some customers know that you know, hey, maybe maybe my cold data can get hot at any time, uh, so they don't want to move that right um, or. 
you know, anything like that. They, or, or they maybe, maybe they don't want to move their snapshots over. So they have the ability to, to remove that. But I would say for uh, most of our customers, auto is typically the best, best choice for them. And in our case, Kevin, you did mostly snaps, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's interesting, right? Because if we're going to encourage people to use snaps and snap everything all the time, each snap is kind of small, but in it's, aggregate, yeah, they especially build up. if you're building on a five minutes or every hour, like some more aggressive Snapchat policies. Right. It's nice to have those yep. in place, but it starts consuming storage. Right. And so with this, to be able to bounce those off into the cloud is is a nice, a yeah, nice way to do definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. Right. And one, one, uh, sorry, one, one comment there, um, you know, is it takes advantage of all the data efficiency when you move it to the cloud, right? So if you, you're taking those aggressive snapshots and want to hold on to them forever, right. you know, maybe you're taking one every minute and, and there's almost no change, it's going to dedupe and and you're going to see you know, a snapshot that's infinitesimally small, right? And, and it's moved over and, and it's saved in the cloud, so it's not taking up more cloud space. Right. And know, it's not increasing your bill. That efficiency is, is important and um, you know, the, the movement weight is, is lessened too, since you're sending fewer blocks over the wire. Yeah, we're actually logged into the uh, Azure account right now that gives you a little bit of a glimpse into uh, the type of data that's moving over. And it, obviously on our, our side, the uh, ingress is uh, data that's being absorbed by Azure. But as the snapshots are coming down, it's giving us uh, about 500 meg or so uh, each uh, little spike. And um, I mean, overall, you're not seeing a lot of data coming in and it just slowly increments up. So you're not it's there if you need it, and uh, when you do need it, uh, it will pull down whatever your line speed is going into uh, your cloud connection. From the Azure side, is there obviously there's some visibility into what's going on, but otherwise it doesn't really care, right? I mean, it's just kind of yeah, hanging out like doing a, its cloud thing. Yeah, right now this is just a uh, storage container, so there's no compute attached to it, and occasionally you'll get your uh, your bill of your additional cents and quarters and everything to add into it. But, uh, right. Well, to be fair, we're not exactly running in production either. So we're not cranking on this thing like, you know, if you were a law firm or something, you know, creating files on a regular basis. But, yeah. you know, for, for small businesses, um, this is a pretty easy path. Now, to be fair, when we set this up initially, it's we do a lot of work in the cloud, but we haven't done uh, a ton of exploration on cloud integrations with primary storage. So from your perspective, and this is cheating a little bit because you know a lot of these things about storage technologies, what's the lift to go from cloud and to get your keys into that sort of thing if you haven't done it before and then the, you know bringing that forward to your connection with the DM? Well, we've done a lot of work with Azure and it's really easy if you have your own uh, Azure account already either tied into a, a Microsoft account, for example, um, I feel you know, like I'm smiling because I feel like if you have your own account, like like you got your first car, right? <laughs> like if you yeah. have your own car, you can drive anywhere you want. If you have your own cloud account, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you make your container, you build your instance, and you just the main activity is getting your keys from them and just popping them into your end component, and making sure you have proper security in place because you really don't want to have your storage open to the outside world or sure someone getting access into your storage from I mean, this is the security perspective, but also to start using your account for other computer yeah, storage yeah, yeah. needs. Yeah, we, we don't want any of that. Um, so finish walking through this. I, I distracted everybody with my stories, but yeah. So beyond uh, having your uh, saying your uh, tiering policy, it just works. It's designed to be the most painless process and you'll see your uh, used capacity uh, grow and uh, from the uh, the local tiering side, you'll see how much of uh, each tier is off into the cloud. But the the hope here and what really played out was you set up and you don't have to worry about it at all. It just works the way it would be if it was a, another connected uh, uh, storage array or a, a shelf, for example. And so, Alex, this does its work what overnight, or how do we how do you handle the scheduling and the uh, the timing for when this happens? Because you may not want it pushing data during you know your nine to five hours to cause network congestion right yeah yeah so you, you can schedule up schedule those um, when it moves data absolutely so if you want to schedule it overnight to avoid you know your your normal production window you can do that okay so as we've walked through this as Kevin's walked through it what is 
what do we miss? Because it seems kind of too easy. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't want this to sound like an infomercial where it's like, wow, you know, that was easy. But I mean, it is really pretty simple unless we've totally neglected to cover something. No, I, that, I mean, that's a big part of the design philosophy, right? Is we want to make it so easy a generalist can do it, right? But um, really, ultimately, that that's the goal is is to make it easy. And, you know, glad that you found it that easy to do because that was certainly the goal. So, um, no, I, as long as you have the account and, and the feedback we get is typically uh, the, the hardest part is making sure you have the network connectivity to you know to to get to the cloud right uh, you know especially large organizations tend to have a lot of firewalls and things like that so th- that typically is the hardest part but once you enter those keys and everything like that it's it, it's it's that easy yeah it's always the networking isn't it like every time every time we ever have a problem it always comes back to either well, someone typed in the wrong ip address or didn't check the box or whatever <laughs> Well, everyone's getting more advanced on how they want their uh, environments firewalled off. So there are a lot of protections you know to, uh, you need to drill through now. That in a perfect world you'd want everything closed off. So it's trying to make sure you can connect into the outside world safely. All right. So one last thing for you, Alex. It's uh, easy to use. It, I mean, it looks like I could probably do it. Uh, cost effective. You can pick the cloud you want. You can move around. You can do whatever you want there. Uh, what about licensing from the Lenovo perspective? How much is this going to cost me if I uh, if I want to deploy this on my DM? Yeah, so so there is a we, we license it on a per terabyte basis. So okay. as based on how much you want to tier, um, you know, so we typically offer a, kind of a free trial of a, a small amount to get you started. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can try it out and make sure you like it. But um, you know, it just kind of scales as you grow. Similar to similar to the actual cloud. Uh, piece. So the the only uh, caveat I'd add is, you know, if a customer is doing like an on-prem, like if, if they buy storage grid, um, it, that there's no license cost for. But but to okay. go to the public cloud, so so that's an alternative, right? Especially for our larger customers who want to kind of use this on pre- completely on-prem, they can do it that way. But uh, I think for the most part, our customers are are looking for that public cloud tiering, and you know. Talk with your 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 uh, sales rep, and and they can get you. They're happy to get you a price. You uh, you snuck a license in there, I think, didn't you, on ours? Yeah, I usually bypass it. <laughs> <laughs> we go straight to the engineers, but it's a good point, and I think the um, uh, the the storage grid notion is is important too, because we do see a number of use cases where uh, organizations want to have that stack in in the data center in their physical control either for regulatory or just you know because they want to uh, so that's a, a good point that that we didn't explicitly call out before uh, so i appreciate that um, all right so we've had it for a number of weeks running using it it's simple what else yeah. anything else no it's i mean the key message it's simple okay it's simple yeah. so you know like we said at the beginning for mid-market storage especially that that are taking advantage of these new technologies, whether it's NVMe or faster protocols or whatever, the investment in arrays uh, is is it's meaningful. And so, to be able to uh, optimize your on-premises capacity and just jump out to the cloud with whatever you want, whether it's a little bit, whether it's just snaps, or whether it's extending the entire array to the cloud, is a tremendous uh, opportunity. Uh, and is, uh, is something definitely worth exploring, as we've noted, uh, and we'll link to it in the um, in the description on YouTube. We did a write up. It's really simple. We showed you it's simple. It's cost effective, and really makes the cloud easy to consume. So thanks, Alex, for joining in. We appreciate your contribution, Kevin. Good work on the uh, on on that, and uh, we'll be back soon. Thank you.